Normally on this channel, I strive to give you good writing advice. Unless a corporation offers me a lot of money and then suddenly I'm a fan of adverbs and passive voice. Today, we're looking at some pieces of bad writing advice and what you should do instead. Oftentimes, bad writing advice is just good writing advice covered in an outer shell of bad writing advice. So join me as we burrow through that disgusting outer shell to find the nuggets of wisdom contained in these oft-repeated pieces of bad writing advice. Let's get right into it. Bad piece of advice number one, you should try to be original, or you should try to come up with an original idea. Original ideas are kind of like parking spots. A lot of the good ones are already taken, and the ones that are left are either really, really far away, or they're like in between two people who don't know how to park and are over the lines. The point is that a lot of the good original ideas have already been taken. And that's not even getting into the fact that originality is really hard to measure and whether something is original or not entirely depends on whether the reader has experienced that story somewhere else, but let's not get into that. The reality is that most stories follow well-used plot sequences or have plots that the reader already really understands, something like a mystery or romantic arcs, things like that. The reason that most of these plot structures and just plots in general are reused is because they work really well. And you don't have to come up with an entirely new plot or an entirely new story structure in order to come up with something that feels fresh and engaging. The potential for innovation in stories is not so much around coming up with new ideas, but rather combining existing ideas in interesting and novel ways. That's where most of the potential for innovation lies. When people talk about stories being unoriginal or ideas not being original, they're really more talking about stories that are derivative or just kind of bland copies of something that's already out there. I would say don't be worried too much about originality, and if you do really want to come up with something that's fresh and that, that feels new, try to focus more on combining multiple familiar ideas rather than coming up with something that is completely unheard of. Next up, bad piece of advice number two, and this is specifically targeted towards beginner writers usually, and that is don't start with novels, do short stories first. This is like telling someone who wants to run a marathon that they should practice training 400 meter races first. Short stories and novels require completely different skill sets. Yes, there is some overlap. Yes, there are a lot of similarities, but they are two distinct art forms. I also don't think that this idea that short stories are easier because they're short is actually true. It's the same thing as saying getting good at a 400 meter race is easier than a marathon because the 400 meter race is shorter. Short stories are shorter, hence the name, which means you can get them done faster, you can produce a lot of them, but I don't really see the point of that, especially if your main goal is to eventually write a novel. Your first novel is going to be difficult no matter what, and you're not going to be able to overcome or develop the skills to overcome those difficulties until you actually sit down and write it. Writing a bunch of short stories, while it will kind of help, is just kind of delaying the inevitable. Writing short stories is a completely distinct thing than writing novels, and if your goal is to write novels, that's what you should be focused on. Next up, bad piece of advice number three, write what you know. This one I don't think is bad advice, but I think it's generally taken to an extreme that makes it bad advice. What the write what you know advice implies is that you should only write about situations or experiences that you yourself have personally experienced. Not everybody interprets it that way, but that's kind of the most extreme example of it. There is a grain of truth to that, because having personal experience with something will allow you to write about it on a level that you wouldn't be able to if you hadn't experienced it. But in order to reach your full potential as a writer, you need to learn to write about things beyond your own personal experience. 
Writing is as much about empathizing with others as it is about understanding your own experience. Understanding other people, people in different situations, people who have led different lives than you have is crucial to becoming a better writer. Being able to connect and digest and listen and understand other people's experiences is a crucial skill that all writers need to develop. Writing is fundamentally about connecting people with ideas that they aren't familiar with. And in order to do that, you yourself need to practice connecting with ideas that you aren't familiar with. What this advice gets at that is really important is you need to do your research. If you haven't experienced something, you need to do your research. You need to go out and talk to people. You need to read what they're writing about those experiences. You need to have them read your writing to make sure that you're portraying things correctly but you don't have to have gone out and experienced the thing yourself. Research can get you part of the way provided you do it thoroughly and properly. So a better way to phrase this advice might be write what you've experienced and if you haven't experienced it, then research the crap out of it. Next up, advice number four, and this is more of a category of advice, but it's any advice that basically tells someone either not to write or gives them a sense that they aren't ready to write either a specific story or a specific novel, something like that. I don't know how often people encounter this. I mean, I wouldn't even really classify this as advice. It's more just kind of trolling. But you will occasionally hear people in critiques say things like, you're not ready to write a story this complicated, or you should come back to this story in a year, those sorts of things. I also get this on the I also get this in the comments on these videos occasionally, people telling me that I should stop making videos for six months until I've actually figured out meaningful things to say. You also occasionally get this with successful authors who kind of put writing on this pedestal and that it's this fragile thing that beginners should not approach until they're completely ready to, and if they sully the page with their low quality writing, they'll be committing some unspeakable crime against humanity. I get a little bit annoyed whenever somebody tells somebody else that they shouldn't write or that they don't have the skills to be a writer. First of all, I don't see how this is productive, and second of all, I don't know what the alternative is that they're proposing. There's nothing you can do to improve as a writer except get writing done. Yes, you can study and learn and all of that, and you can absorb lots of knowledge, but at a certain point you need to practice. Anything that discourages people from doing that practice, I, I, that's not good. People get this idea of being ready to do something backwards. They have this idea that you become ready to do this thing and then you do the thing. Become good enough to write a good novel and then you write a good novel. It actually works the other way. You do the thing it turns out you get a result from it, and then retroactively you can tell that you were ready. You try to write a novel, it turns out good, that means that you were ready to write a good novel. You will never be ready beforehand, there is nothing you can do to prepare yourself to achieve that, you just have to go and do the thing. Yes, you need to pay attention. Yes, you need to practice deliberately. Yes, you need to improve your knowledge. Yes, you need to get critiques. But the only way that you're going to improve, the only way that you're going to be ready to produce a good novel is to produce a good novel. And in order to do that, you often have to produce a few bad ones as well. Any advice that tells people not to write or any advice that discourages them from writing is just terrible advice and you should probably ignore it. Just like I'm glad you didn't ignore this video because you're still watching it right now because you're hearing the words coming out of my face. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.